and that is to get close to God and to get to know Him more. And so we want Him to speak to us. God wants us to know Him, and He wants us to follow Him. And the best way to follow someone is to get to know them, right? You don't follow somebody you don't know. If you follow somebody you don't know, that's what gets you in trouble. Let's go back and look at look at the history. Um, people think that they know somebody, and then they realize they follow a wrong person. Go back in the, the late 1970s, and the, the late, late 1970s, when the people um, went with Jim Jones to, to Jonestown, and they, you know, they, 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 they created their own habitat in, in, in they, and these people followed them. They thought they knew at first when they saw this magnificent, charismatic preacher who started out preaching the gospel. They didn't really know him, but they followed the person that they didn't know because of his charisma. And over 900 people lost their lives. No, no, no how many people were impacted by that. You, you go and, and, into the 1990s. And the people that followed David Koresh and the Waco and into that compound and, and, and those people who were massacred and who died in that terrible way because they followed or, 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 or go even farther into the nineties, the people that all bought the same kind of re Reebok tennis shoes and decided they were gonna hop on the help out comet and drink and, and drink their poison and they followed leaders that they did not really know. And so, um, why is it we want to hear from God? We want to get to know Him. And we want you, when you know somebody, you can more apt to follow them and follow them willingly and not follow them under an unction that, 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 that you're forced to. You know, God, um, He will speak to us, He will reveal His nature to us so that we can have faith to trust Him in, in the assignment that He calls us to do. And everybody here has an assignment. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, you still got assignments for God until you leave this earth. It, it's important. And, and you should still want to find out what it is God wants for me to do. And, and, and don't use the excuse, well, I've served my time. Folks, that it's not a prison sentence to serve God. It's a privilege to serve God. Every Anything that we can do to show our service to God, it is a privilege and the privilege to, and, and, and you would be surprised at the, the ways people can serve it, and, and, and it's not always been going out. Um, but but Ricky, I think that you know, you've been at Walmart, been a willing vessel for somebody to give you a card, and then you're willing to call that person and invite them to a church. And you didn't know that person, but, but you know, that's a willingness to follow the you, you see, you don't call and do something like that unless the voice of God's leading. The voice of the devil will never lead you to call somebody and invite them to the kingdom. The, 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 the voice of the devil, God's voice will. When we're listening to God's voice, he prompts us to do things that that, that, that maybe you know we even are, are concerned about. I, I, I think it's an incredible thing to do. And so, so let's look, you know, here's the thing. And it is one of the keys when, when God speaks. I say when God speaks. When God speaks. When God speaks, respond. When God speaks, respond. All right. Let's try a little, little bit. Tanya, come over here and sit right over here. Okay, we're going to, we're going to go through a, a, a very fun record. I'm going to help you on the other don't bring your phone with you. Okay. Now, in our household, there are different ways that we speak to each other, even in the same house. Okay. So, um, in the morning time, um, I, I start off my morning. First thing I do in the morning, I have to feed our dogs, or I can't have peace and quiet. I have my God time after I feed. Them. I said, "Don't get up in your God's book, God. No, I put peace and quiet before I go. I can't concentrate on studying the Word." If they're barking, because they at five thirty in the morning they start barking for food, okay? And so, so Sister Janet, I, I gotta, you know, that, that shirt, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I've gotta, I've gotta feed the dogs, okay? But I feed the dogs, and then 
I'd go and I'd sit in my recliner, and I'm reading my Bible. Uh, I'd get whatever resource I'm using to, with my praying time. And I, after I read my Bible and do my devotion, then I, then I sit down and I'm, I'm doing my um, I, I'm doing my prayer time and I'm journaling and praying and talking to God. And so um, just different you know, time, however long it's going to be and every morning is a little different. And I may look at the clock. I know what time she needs to get up to go to work. So um, I don't know if she's awake or not. But about Usually about 6.15 from dawn, I get up and I'll go and I'll put her coffee on. She has to so send her coffee on so that way when I get through, I'll go ahead and take her coffee and, and sit it beside the bed so she'll have it when she wakes up. And hook the line. All right? Now, here's what I know. I don't generally, I, there's no response involved in that. Here's the response that takes place. I know when she's awake because I will get a text that will say this sometime during the morning time after she wakes up. It's not usually, um, thank you for the coffee or anything like that. It's usually... <laughs> Um, Wordle, 1089, and it tells me her Wordle score for the morning. Okay, <laughs> Then I know she's awake because she's been up doing her Wordle. You don't have to know what Wordle is. You don't know what it is. It really doesn't matter to you. And so she tells, she texts me her score after I do my Bible study. I don't do my Wordle until after I do my Bible study, my praying time, because I won't put Wordle after. But I respond to that. Okay, She sends me her score. Then inevitably, I want to send her my score, which is usually better. Okay, and, um, and so and I want to send her my score. So it's a competition we have going. Here's the catch: when, when she sends me that text, I generally respond. When I send her my text, she responds. Communication, right? It's response. There's a response that takes place now. There's also the thing with this. Hey, could you warm up my coffee? Um, coffee may have sat there for 30 minutes on the bedside before she started. Could you warm up my coffee? I'll come and get the coffee. So you holler like you want your coffee, like you're in the back bedroom and I'm in the living room. Uh-oh. Now, would you say you're in the back bedroom? How would you say that to where I can hear it in the in the in, in the den? Please come pay my coffee. There you go. Now the response is not yes, ma'am. I'm going to do that. The response is me walking into that room to get her coffee cup and going and putting it in the microwave to keep the coffee and then delivering it back to her. No, 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 no. That's it's not a one-sided thing. Okay, she does plenty of things um, for me all the time. Because I, um, twice a month she gets paid, I check her paycheck on our in our check account, you know, right away. And that's always an exciting day when it's on payday, right? And so uh, she goes to work, you know. And, and, uh, and so, so but, but there's a response. You expect a response from people close to you, don't you? Mm-hmm. And you may send a text to somebody you don't know, or you may call out to somebody you don't know, and it may irritate you. But if you talk to somebody that you know, if you're in Walmart and and you see Sister Panky walking around and and, and hope it's you and, and, and you holler out, Sister Panky. Sister Panky. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh good Lord. Sister Panky. Right. And if she just if she just had her cart and just went the other way, what would happen? You'd be offended with you. And she didn't respond to you. If you knew she heard you. Yeah. If you knew she heard I thought she heard me, yeah. <laughs> Because there's not a whole lot of sister panties in Walmart. No. <laughs> and, um, and so, you, if God speaks to you, what do you think He expects? He expects us to respond. When we don't respond to God's speaking, what does it do to Him? It offends Him. It offends God when we don't respond to Him. And we, when we don't respond to God's voice, and we're telling him, I'm not going to get close to you. I'm not going to experience you. Because sometimes God will say things that we don't like. You know, when, when my children were young, we would try to get on them about that certain things. Sometimes they would ignore us when we didn't tell them what they wanted to hear. 
Caleb in particular, he would just go on doing his own thing if we were telling him something he didn't want to hear. Because he, he wanted to ignore that. But if we told him we were taking him to Chuck E. Cheese, uh-huh. he was all up ready to go. <laughs> you see, if God's talking to you to rebuke you, to give you a command, to, or, or to bless you, you should respond to all those. Go ahead, Joseph. Um, you're probably sending me a text and man, y'all don't you ever do that again. <laughs> Scripture shows that when God reveals to you what he's doing, that's the time to respond. Not to wait. If he reveals you, the, the, think about the completed work that, 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 that may take a long time. God spoke to Abraham when he's 75. And it's 25 years later before he becomes a dad. The dad he promised. I mean, God expects us to respond when he talks to us. And his promise is there. The timetable on his promise is up to him. But you, the more, the longer you wait to respond, well, think about this way: the longer you wait to respond to God, the farther out that timetable may go. You're, and if it's a twenty-five year timetable, but you waited five years to respond, and you just sent it thirty years down the road, you see that, that, that that's that's where you've got to. That's why we should respond quickly. See, God initiates. Isaiah said it this way in Isaiah forty-six: "What I have said." That I will bring about what I have planned, that will I do. So there's an amazing thing with this. So because of God speaking, because of our response, and one of the things that tells us is that there is incredible power for prayer. You see, you're responding in prayer to God. You're responding, and even in your actions can become prayer if you're responding to God. And so there's power in prayer. And then, the, when you pray, do you believe that God will speak to you, or do you just believe you're going to speak to God? Every morning, I'm going in, I'm asking God for a fresh word for that day, because I don't rely on the word that I had yesterday. I rely on a fresh word each day. And so, even though there are bold things I'm praying about, the things that I'm circling, and God's, God's refreshing me, I, I, I'm wanting to bolster it and build up the boldness that in, in prayer because I know there's power in it. But with that said, that also is part of a response to a uh, place that he wants to pray take us. Through prayer, God reveals himself to us. Now, we just touched on this minute ago, but God speaks in different ways to us. I want to share with you Several of the ways that God speaks to us, okay? One, God speaks through the Holy Spirit to reveal himself, his purposes, and his ways. We know he speaks through the Holy Spirit to us. The rest of these ways come from the Holy Spirit as well. But as, as he speaks through the Holy Spirit, he's revealing himself, he's revealing his purposes, and he's revealing his ways to us. Now, how else is God going to speak to us through the Holy Spirit? I, that it makes no difference. Hear me. It makes no difference if you read your Bible opening up this beautiful leather bound Bible. Okay, it, it makes no difference if you open up reading this or if you're opening it up on your U version reading. Okay? Uh, I'll be quite honest with you. In my, in my morning Bible reading, I've got my iPad and I've got my phone out reading my Bible that way because it's a whole lot quicker to click and, and, and get to the scripture verses that I'm going with that those particular passages that day. I'm, I'm in uh, Judges and Acts right now, and, and so um, you know I can I can go to those. And plus, it's easy to mark it there because when you finish that, you know you're marked. And sometimes I have I, 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 I have markers in my Bible that will fall out. Now I'll still use this this from time to time. And but and so and, and, and you know let, let's be careful 
you see somebody with their phone out in church, they're not always playing a video game or texting. They may be reading their Bible. In fact, I'll tell you this. At a camp meeting, I had my phone out 100% of the time I was in camp meeting service. Because I take my notes on my phone. I type in no note pages on my phone because it's so much easier to do. Um, and, and, and since I'm driving people around, I don't have space to carry a pen and a notepad. I, you know, I used to carry a whole briefcase to camp meeting and write down notes and sermon notes and stuff like that. So that when I got back to church, I could preach a sermon that I heard camp meeting to you guys. And, um, and, and, and so that, that's, you know, but, but you know, now I, I got notes so I can come back and I can preach to you off my notes. If that's what I want to do, you would never know. Um, but the point is, now, yeah, there are some people that make being foolish with their phone. But I'm, I, you know, I use it for my Bible. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You use it for your Bible. Um, and, 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 you know, and, and I'll, be, I'll take it another step, but if, if you feel the unction of the Spirit, I believe in this. If God's given us a resource, that, you know, uh, if we want to take something stupid that's going on, but you feel the answer of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit speaking to you through a word that you want to take somebody a scripture, you might you might encourage and bring conviction on somebody. Let God speak to you through that. Let God take these things that have taken control of our minds and let us take it back and use it to, to send the gospel out. Okay? And if you don't feel comfortable with your phone and you want to use your handheld Bible, then that's fine. Because um, I still got that because if an EMP goes off, I've got, you know, uh, we lose all electricity and electronic devices, I'm fine. But I do believe the Word of God speaks to us. And I look for God's Word to speak to me. I love the book of Joshua, one of my favorite books in the Bible. And anytime I read the book of Joshua, I get encouraged. You want to talk about people of faith? Joshua had miracle after miracle, faith after faith took place. But I almost regret when the book of Joshua ends. It's, it's, it's such a powerful thing. Look at Acts, same way. And, um, and so, let the Bible. God speaks through prayer if you listen. It's just a one sided thing. He's talking. You're not listening. Doesn't mean God's not speaking. Remember, God speaks through your circumstances. And understand the things going on in your life are many ways God's speaking. Sometimes um, God will knock us down and put us in the bed to keep us from doing stuff we don't need to do. Or sometimes He may say, "You know what? If, if, if you do not be serious about this, I'm going to show you these circumstances in life. Um, he will humble us if we need to be humble. Mm -hmm. He will humiliate us if we need to be humiliated." You know, God would rather us be humiliated by the circumstances in our lives than for us to go to hell. Just this week, I don't know all the circumstances. And I'm on, because of the years of ministry, I'm going to give a bit of a doubt. Dr. Tony Evans, one of my favorite preachers of the gospel. And until, until I'm proved wrong, he's still one of my favorite preachers of the gospel. He has stepped back from his church with the elders. His church, his church is a massive church in Dallas. And, um, and Tony Evans, he, if the elders didn't say this, Tony Evans came out and said, because of a past sin in my life. I don't know what the past sin is. Maybe they were real. It's not my business. I can't tell us what the past sin is. It's not my business what the past sin is. But you know what he did? He said, I need to step back so I can have time of repentance and so that. And so, that, and he said, and what he said. And he's got whatever circumstances. God said, you know what, Tony? I love you so much. You're 74 years old. You've served me all these years. You need to sit back and be a worshiper, so that we can deal with the sin issue. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. There's a lot of people that probably disqualify themselves. That that that, that uh, or that Tony Evans probably disqualifying himself for a whole lot less than a lot of other people who continue probably along. Um, but my point is, you know, there's going to be a lot of there, there's a lot of people out there that hate church and hate God, and, or people that hate television preachers and radio preachers and say, I just wait for Tony Evans to fall. 
And, um, but, you know, we should be praying for this man. But I also respect the fact that, that, that he's come out and been honest about it. And again, I don't, he don't owe me or you or anybody else an explanation of what he did. His repentance is between him, God, and the elders of his church. And, um, and so, but my, my, my point on that is circumstances, God will speak to us. And maybe God is speaking to Tony through that. You know why? Because God loves Tony yeah. And God will do that. God would rather us be humble and humiliate us than for us to go to hell. And God started the circumstances in our life. You know, not every sickness that we have is random. There are some sicknesses that we will go through so that God can slow us down from the business of this life. I so I want you to redirect yourself. Because my, as we said Sunday, your life is about eternity. Your hope is about the eternity that you have in front of you. You know, there's other things God will use to speak. God will use the church and other believers to speak to you. Now understand this. You need to come every service, whether it's Wednesday or whether it's Sunday or whether it's Sunday school, and expect God to speak. You're not, not everything that I'm going to say in a sermon is going to be what's going to be. Listen for that one nugget that God wants to send the word home with you. You see, it, it's not always the whole message. And we, we sometimes concentrate that we look at the forest and sometimes we don't see the tree. And we may just need that tree out of the sermon instead of the whole forest. Now, um, because there may be one thing that God says, you know, it may be one person, or it may be one thought, it may be one thing that the Holy Spirit uses to speak to you. He's done that to me so many times. Uh, you know, and whether it be um, somebody here, or whether it be at a camp meeting, it's rarely a whole sermon that that, that, that changes me. It, it's that one nugget. And allow yourself to that, that one, and when you get that one nugget, don't just get up and leave. You might get another nugget. But let that nugget grow, and let that be seed in your life. So why does God speak to us? Though? So God speaks to us through these different ways. This is one of the truths. Well, why? Why does He speak to us? Well, I mentioned earlier because He wants to reveal Himself to us. Well, what does God want to How does God want to reveal us? What does God want to reveal to us? You know, you can't reveal everything about yourself to everybody, can you? I mean, what does the Bible tell us? If we, if we are transparent in our life to everybody, that's foolish, isn't it? It's foolish, right? Everybody shouldn't know uh, all the things, but there are some people you need to reveal things to. Okay? And that we did that, that you need to be able to reveal things in your life too. Because it's important to have that. And, and probably not one person knows everything about you, but maybe there are different people that you know, you've revealed different things about yourself. God, God wants to reveal these stuff to us in different ways. And one of the things that, that God initiates is He reveals through speaking to us His character. God reveals His character to us. And it is important for us to understand that my, God reveals his character to the next one you'll have up there. When God speaks by the Holy Spirit, he'll often reveal something about himself. Let's look, I want to, um, and I'm not, you're not going to have um, the scripture, but in Genesis 17, um, and God, in my word, God reveals his character, okay? That's a little farther down. In Genesis 17, it says, When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be like this. So, but him and Abraham have been talking for 24 years. But here, what did God do? He revealed a character thing about him. What character did he reveal to Abraham here? He said, I am God Almighty. So he told Abraham, you see, when Abraham is sitting there thinking, okay, I'm too old to have a kid, huh. son, I'm God Almighty. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
You're not too old to do anything if I make it happen. And, 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 and so, and you know, I, I called you out when you were 75. You weren't a boy. I called you out when you were a 75-year-old man. And now I'm giving you your son a promise. Your wife is pregnant now. And, and I mean, the reason I know that is because I'm God Almighty. This is part of his, his, all, his might is part of his character. I mean, God reveals things like that. Leviticus, even, you know, uh, we, talk, we joke about Leviticus a lot of times, but even in, in the book of Leviticus, he reveals his character. He said in Leviticus chapter 19, he says, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy, because why? Because I, your God, am holy. His character. He's almighty. What's the other part of his character? He's holy. Did you know that the church of God still believes that holiness is God's standard for living? We can't live holy without having the holy God in our life. We go on farther. Malachi chapter 3. You know, we, you know, we, we, uh, and, and, you know the, here it is, all the way to the last book of the Old Testament. And we're in Malachi chapter 3. He reveals something to him about his character here. And um, why you use your phone to so you do things quicker. He says, I the Lord do not change. So you the descendants of Jacob are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask. How are we to return? Now, what does he say? Part of his character? He's God and what? He never changes. Which is so important for us to understand. So that over and over, God will speak to you to tell you about his character, who he is. I am love. I am merciful. I am forgiving. God speaks when he wants to involve us in his work. We talked about that a couple weeks ago about God involving us in his work. He unveils his character to help us respond in faith. That's what God does. People can better respond to God's instructions when they know who he is. Again, you're more apt to follow when you know more about who you're following, right? I have a really hard time placing a lot of faith in politicians. Everyone that I see on TV, I've been watching for a lot of years. And you know, they've proved their character to me over the years. It's hard for me to put faith in those people. And, and so people's character will determine whether you put faith in them or not. Hasn't God proved by his character in your life enough for you to be able to follow him? Has he ever, has he ever um, not forgiven you? Has he, ever, ha, has he ever not kept one of his promises? Of course he hasn't. God has always shown who he is to us. We just have to be looking and listening. You'll know him by experience. God also reveals when he reveals he reveals his purposes. So not only does he reveal his character, he reveals his purposes. God always has far more of his heart to accomplish through lives and churches than we could possibly imagine. You need to understand God's purposes for you. That God believes you can do more than you believe. God believes this church can do more than we believe this church can do. See, we sometimes do that, oh, oh, we can't do this, we can't do that. But God says, you know, I've got a purpose for you. I've got a purpose for you, Lord, Lord, Lord. Yeah, I've got a purpose for you. So I've got a purpose for you. And I and then he said, I know you can fulfill this. I know you can fulfill that, that purpose, Philip, Philip. And I mean, I know that you can do that. I know that Michael Allen, I know that you can fulfill that purpose. Anita, I know that you can fulfill that purpose. Don't you ever doubt that what God can use you in. 
Because God has more confidence in you than you have. If you'll just start realizing just some of the confidence that God has in you, you can start fulfilling your purpose. Well, over five years ago, somebody in this church came to me and said, I really want to start doing more and become a worker. And, and, and I want to do some things. I really, we really need to start a new Sunday school class. That person had this. We really need to start a new Sunday school class. I said, we need a, we need a, we need a new Sunday school class for, um, for young adults and older adults that it would be a class that would have that would be relational. And and so in 2019 they started the Acts class. We tried to start an Acts class before for several years. It, it was just kind of and I looked at that person and I said, you know what? I have confidence that you come and ask him any that this is the thing. I'm not sure if I can help. Well, let's just try. And for the last five years, there's been a lot of good things that have happened in that class. I mean, God saw, and there's more to come. And I look and I think, and, and I think of some of these, yes, yeah, some of them give each other a hard time. That's just part of it. But I, th- I, I if, if you walk in that Sunday school class on a Sunday morning, and they, they, they usually, they'll have, they'll, it depends, you know, we, they'll have eight to ten people in there. And there's a camaraderie. It's, it's basically a small group that the, that the senior citizen class is, a, is wonderful and amazing. And, and, and it's a group, too. And, and it's still a high one and, 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 and everything. But my point is, you submit yourself to finding God's purpose. And then he didn't just leave you there with that. Now, everybody in that class are workers in this church. Some of them are praise him, playing instruments, doing video, um, doing double, triple duty. Oh, they'll teach the uh, different ones will teach the class. And, and, and so forth. And, 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 and you know, iron sharpens iron, but for Brother Ricky, it's what happens when somebody allows themselves to listen to the voice of God. And, and don't discount the importance. I love walking by there. I love walking by East East Sunday School class. Oh, um, in, in, in the teen class or the pre teen class or the little kids class or even the nursery or or, or, or people do. There's so many different things that, that, you, that, 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 that God can use you for. All of them have gifts that God says, I have a purpose for you and I have confidence in you. And you just got to, again, remember, the, just remember this statement. God has far more on his heart to accomplish through you than you did. In other words, God looks at you and sees far more than you see. Well, you know what? Why don't you try this for a little bit? Let this be your exercise of faith. Start asking God in the morning, God, let me see me the way you see me. Let me see me the way you see me. You'll just show you the apple of his eye and you'll be able to see the ministry that you have. In your life, and all of you will find yourself useful in the kingdom of God. How powerful do you, you think about it? You know, he didn't choose me to preach or be a pastor because of eloquence or because of or because I had the right suit or because or because I, uh, you, you know, maybe a little bit because I had the right piano player to be part of it. Um, he chose me because I was willing. 
when God called me, I didn't regret it for a second. The night God called me, I've, I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about running. I wasn't going to be a gentleman. When God called me that night. I said, I will gladly do what you ask me to do. And I will go where you tell me to go. And I will go through any door you open. And that's been my philosophy from day one. Because it's not about it's not about your talents or about about the having you know um, it's not about like the Brady Bunch episode where um, where Greg Brady had to have that he fit the suit. It's not about fitting the suit, folks. And I know I'm dating myself when I'm saying that. Fine. When God speaks to you, he's revealing not just your purposes. Not just his purposes, not just his character, he's revealing his ways. Here's what you need to know about God. He does not do things in an ordinary way. God's ways are not the ways of man. The ways of man are supposed to be changing and bending to God's ways. God will never change to bend to us. In other words, he's not going to conform himself to us. We have to conform ourselves. His ways are higher, bigger, they're better than our ways. He's God. He's God Almighty. And so we start, when we start learning the ways of God, God's kingdom principles are always God's kingdom principles. They don't change. God's purposes, God's way of redeeming. Would you redeem people the way God did? No, you wouldn't, would you? What did He have to do? To what did He choose to redeem people by? Would you give yours? No. I'm not giving any of my three kids. No. I'm not as good as God. I'm not as giving as God. I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't bear to uh, to bear just giving my three kids up. Not in that manner. But again, He redeemed the world in a way that no one. And you know what? Here's what proves that He's God. There's no other so-called God in the world that ever gave their son and then resurrected. You see, he's the only one. And so that's what proves that he is the only God. What about his way of cleansing? There are still religions out there that try to practice sacrifices. But his way of cleansing is different, isn't it? What about the way, his way of, his, of service and love? How that he's the king of kings and he serves us. I thought we're supposed to be his servants, but yet, what did Jesus do before he went to the cross? He washed every one of the disciples, even the ones that would deny him and reject him and betray him. Now, I ask you this. If you knew somebody was going to send you out to the sheriff or to whoever and cause you to have a death penalty, would you be washing their feet? I doubt that. Because we're not God. We're not that way. His ways are way different than ours. His desires are to accomplish his purposes. But get this. God does not choose to accomplish his purposes from heaven. Again, he does things. Here's what you need to know about his life. God chooses to accomplish his purposes through you. Not through heaven. The purposes of God don't run through heaven. The purposes of God run through So that is why we need to hear from God. 
Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this truth, for God, that you speak to us and that we can hear you, dear Lord. You're not silent, dear God. You're very loud. God, we want to hear everything that you have for us. Thank you, dear God, that you're going to use everyone, not only that is here right now, but will be here Sunday, that will be here this week, dear God, that, 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 that you want to use them, dear God, in different